So today we'll just go with uh, with why we are starting. Why I think it was worth it starting a boot club on this uh, on this. How we will manage the boot club. Then we'll just go like through the chapter one, but the chapter one is basically two pages. So we'll go then like add the resources. After that, I have also like let the default air markdown or every chapters uh, here. You can delete it when you update it, but yeah, I wanted to put it here so people can see it. Like if they are beginners, like my 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 only experience of other book club is like people are a bit afraid of 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 doing error and stuff like that. So. Uh, I think you, you can make error. We all make error. We are all here to learn. Like I said, I'm a geographer. I'm no way an expert of uh, health data. I'm not an epidemiologist. Uh, I'm not a um, statistician either. So uh, I can make errors, uh, um, but you are feel, feel free to correct me. I will like it. and. Uh, this is a place where people like uh, can make error and feel safe of doing it. That's why like I will do a bit of live coding at the end. Uh, I think live coding is important because it shows like sometimes we have to do well stuff and we are not like perfect on everything and we need to uh, you can make error and stuff like that. Doing error is is how you learn. Okay, so why? I think like um, currently the industry has made tremendous improvements uh, and new technologies on how to display spatial information. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, like the, the new kids on the block is vector tiles. So I don't know if you know how it works, but when you use Google Map or OpenStreetMap, you basically have displaying raster tiles, which is like small images that are drilled. So you can like, whatever you zoom in, I can open like Google Map. I will open up on Sweet Map because I prefer it, but feel free to, to use Google Map too. Up, can show it quickly. Open Sweet Map. Oh. So it's a basic layer of Open Sweet Map. And do you have it? Is it red? If you check on the top, you have map equal 19, <laughs> which is the Google level. And if I move to it, I will go to map 14 and it changed the display. So this is a behind the scene, it's a raster tiling. And currently we are moving to a uh, vector tiling. No point, this is just like no point reminding that. It's just like the, what I want to say, the technology is evolving very quickly. And there's tremendous efforts of updating that, which is cool. Uh, let's go back to the slide. <clears throat> okay. We have also an increase of spatial data, of the amount of spatial data. Uh, at, at the beginning, when I started my PhD, spatial data was mostly like done by a national agency, like, uh, you know, spatial agency uh, that's collected them, producing them, protected them. Now is like smartphone and stuff like that. We have an increase of data producers uh, the quality of data has varies by tremendously. And like an example, the new iPhone, I don't, I, I can't tell the numbers, but the, the new one, uh, even have like a camera that can do uh, as a little integrated, that's make a point data cloud. You know, like the stuff that's are used by drone to do like uh, 3D stuff and stuff like that. So you have like way more new spatial data, new technology, but this is my personal view. Uh, on the analysis side, we are still just looking at the map, which is good, but it's not enough. And that's why uh, I started this book club. Uh, like on my original tweet, uh, I picked four books, which I think were a good book to go a bit more into uh, the special data analysis uh, and, and just avoid the classic trap of just looking at the map, which is important, by the way, looking at the map and checking what you are doing is correct. It's co like match the reality is important, but it's, I think it's, it's good, but not enough. So the book, uh, I link it like the authors, Pura Momaga. Uh, I think she's a professor, uh, professor uh, I don't remember where, but you can check on her profile uh, of statistics and special health, special statistics applied. She is also part 
I didn't know this 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 task view of uh, people who are doing epidemiology. Uh, so I should check that letters. And she's active on Twitter. So you have yeah. I will. So this is uh, connected currently on my uh, on my computer. But at the end, I will push it so everyone will have that on the GitHub repo. We'll go after onto that on the how section. The book is divided in three parts. Uh, the first part uh, is more like the tool and the concept we'll use. Like she will introduce your, what she means by your special health data. And she will introduce uh, INLA, which stands for uh, Integrated Nested Laplace Approximation. Just to go quickly, it's uh, a special kind of hierarchical model in the Bayesian framework. But instead of using um, Monte Carlo chain, uh, it's used uh, this approximation uh, saying like, <clears throat> and we will go deep. I mean, it's it simplified the process, but it requires uh, correlation, which happen a lot uh, in spatial data. So it's used like one of the characteristics of spatial data to simplify the computation means. Uh, we'll see, like if you don't understand everything about that, that cool because that's the goal of the book club. And we will go like every chapter into that. The second part is modeling and visualization. Uh, that's uh, highlight, highlighting the modeling part because this is what will help us doing inferences and go a bit, uh, I will say a bit deeper into um, the spatial data analysis, not just looking at the map, but also producing model that can be updated that can be like uh, discussed and that can help us doing inferences. On this part of it, uh, she includes visualization, but it's mostly for exploratory data analysis. Uh, and on the last part, uh, communication of results. Uh, this will be six chapter also. That's uh, we'll use Shiny uh, and dashboard to communicate uh, the model, the output of the model. And uh, um, and that's it. Um, that's why I selected this book because I think it's a good all-around book uh, to introduce everything. Maybe other book can go deeper into like the, the modeling part, like for example the book of the <laughs> another book. Book go a bit deeper in the way of collecting data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also, I want to highlight that this book will not cover. Uh, point pattern analysis. This is mostly aerial data and um, uh, point data, but uh, we are not uh, going into the pattern of these point data. Okay, is it good with everyone? So this is why I picked this book. So I hope like you feel like uh, the, the same. And also, it's because uh, also this book is free. I mean, you can access for it for free online. Uh, you can still buy it, but it's 80, 80 bucks. And um, the author, like Paula Moraga, seems fine. Like we shared these documents, and she said that on Twitter she's happy that we are doing it. So it's also like important. We're respecting like the license and stuff like that, uh, which also is important. Okay, <clears throat> so how? If you are not like in the air for data science. A community Slack, uh, you should do it. I will open it uh, briefly. So yes, like uh, just to go back, this is Slack channel, Slack channel everywhere. You have, you can be overwhelmed by all this Slack channel. Uh, like you, you, you can see like I have plenty of them. A lot of them, I haven't opened them, uh, which, but it's interesting. People are exchanging ideas on it. So if you are interested for our model, you can go into it. Uh, I mostly go in the book club, and uh, there is a, um, a special uh, a Slack also on the um, special data. See, like also John is advertising here uh, the book club that we are in. Uh, so the book club uh, Slack is zero house. But I, I will just do quick quick on that. But if you go on top of it, I can close that. You have like. Uh, a pinned part, which has the book, the chart slide, which is uh, will go like the the uh, block down uh, repository that we will share. You have also like I will click on it to open like um, I open plenty of them. Sorry, 
uh, the planning. So we'll have to discuss that later. Currently, like uh, I'm presenting like the first part and introducing the book club, but we have like to pick. Uh, it's good if every one of us uh, is doing presentation uh, because the goal is also like to improve our presentation skills, sharing uh, stuff. Uh, if, if I'm doing it, I'm, I'm here to help. So I can like, if you can't do it, like you have that minute, I can do it. I will read every chapter and share. Uh, but uh, it's good is everyone contributing. I think this is also the goal of the book club is, is that, that we are all of us contributing and sharing and learning. Okay, let's go back to uh, the second clause. So let's go back to the Slack. So you also like the GitHub repo directly. And uh, yeah, like if you want more, like if you couldn't attend this one, you can also ask for more. And yeah, if you have question, if you want to do something like ask here, you can, I will check, but you can ping me. So all you is me and that's it. Okay, is it good for everyone? Okay, if you're not speaking, I assume it's good. Good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Uh, so we are gonna use Git and GitHub. Are you, every one of you, are you familiar with it? So yes. Git, oh, so if everyone is familiar, like I will skip it. <laughs> no, just please, please just go over it. I will go quickly over it. Like Git is a version control, uh, but you have plenty of web in version control. The classic one is just like every time you save, you add the timestamp of of your document, like, you know, like my draft version one, uh, uh, 2022, uh, uh, September 17, version one, et cetera, et cetera. But Git managed that as a DAG, which stands for directed acyclic graph. That's basically, Git is like, let's say like I have produced my version A, I move from my version A to my version B. So in the time I go from A from B, but what's happening on the, on the DAG is like the B part is pointing on the A part. And if you are not happy with that, you can like ask for a C part to point to the A part. And this is basically like, so I don't want to in, go uh, into like the work, I mean, the whole work process of Git. Uh, I have put at the end a link of various resources onto it, but what you have to understand is basically like it's a, it's a graph that's, um, that's uh, where everything points to the previous version. So if you delete a part, you are basically like cutting the graph, but don't be afraid to be delayed because like uh, you, you can like go back. The, the only way to delete it is messing with the Git um, repository. I can show you like, so also it's maybe good to show you that. So this is like the, uh, I, oh, so this is like the, I, this is the project we will all work on, but it is on my computers. And why I created the project, it initialized a Git repository. And in this Git repository, uh, it have every kind of information to rebuild different stuff. And uh, basically, like you are in, and you also have like this git config. This is, uh, you will have one that will look different than mine, uh, but probably like be this more or less the same because, like, if you check the origin, the origin is, is directing to a, a GitHub uh, repository that's mine. And then I have an upstream, which is the old uh, GitHub we have. Upstream is a term like, I will go a bit later on to that. And if we open like branches and stuff like that, it will uh, be saved also here. You have also like other kind of information on uh, all I, uh, what's, what's all I fetch, or does it work, et cetera. How do I have created it, et cetera, et cetera. So Git is basically like, uh, is working in sync, like in the repository and if you don't mess with this repository, like if you delete a, a file, like let's say like I delete these files, for example. Oh. Yes. Um, do you want to close this file? No, yes, sure. 
Uh, it's also like in Git, like, you know, you have this pen and maybe I can increase it. Do you see it well? Um, tools, I can do, I can increase that in project, op uh, global option maybe. Uh, panel, you know, appearance. Yeah, it's better if I put it something like that. Yeah, but I can't increase the size of the, okay, you have this Git pen. And even if I commit my push, which I will go after letters, I can still go back in time. Uh, I can show you letters how to do that. But uh, yeah, I will. I will just uh, go into uh, diff. Uh, I will commit my um, and like. Uh, let's see. Like I think if you. Uh, go into no. This is just my uh, environment. So git. And if I go to diff, I think I have a tool to revert it without this change. If I go to history. Oh, here you have like the graph. So you see? Did you see it? So John uh, started the repository. He forgot something for whatever reason. I don't know. And the, the, the you have like all the old graph. So I haven't commit anything. So currently, like it's uh, it's it's not like uh, any kind of change. So and uh, so he, he, you see, he, he submitted like a fork. He divided and then he merged it to the setup. I don't know why. Yeah, and you can see like what you have changed. You have the initial commit, what you have done, the initial setup, the fork for whatever reason, I don't know. And then this is where we are on um, the remote repository. Okay. Uh, I should also, well, I will go with status. Okay. So let's go back to the group. So yes, <clears throat> so to GitHub, uh, basically it's a company. So a Git is a system to track every change you do in your modification. I will, yeah, you should definitely spend more time on it. But uh, I think I, just go to the resource, it will be better. GitHub for people, some people like have trouble uh, doing the distinction between Git and GitHub. On Git here, this is on my computer. Here, this is my computer. If you check like, uh, if I go on terminal, Slowly, it's slow. Maybe because maybe I have all the stuff open. It's slowly. Well, I will I will go like I will open a terminal to be quicker. So if I move to CD. And the book club name is yours. Here, this is like uh, I'm on my I'm on my computers, and you see like Git is initialized, and I have even started like first week, which is a branch. Like if I go Git status, uh, I know that I have deleted something, uh, and I have modified it. Something did you can I improve? Uh, can I uh, improve that? Is it better? Yeah. I cannot. Wow. Well, so this is on my local, this is on my computers, and this is the change that I have done. Here, because on Air Studio I have clicked to stage, I changed it like my the delete the, the delete option of the four chapters. I have put it in a new spaces, which is will be ready to be changed, but it's not changed until I have committed it. Uh, I have also modified the first uh, chapters, and I also had create a new uh, file, which is the uh, repository with image, which stores some images, but it's not committed. And it's on my computers. No, um, if I go like on the, this part, it will open the GitHub of Air from Data Science uh, Book Club. Uh, which is on the, the platform GitHub. So only, until I haven't like done anything, 
this is still on the, the first version. Okay, is it good? I think I'm, I'm awful at explaining it, but it's maybe something you already knew, so. Uh, but feel free to interrupt me. Okay, so let's go back to how. So you need to have like Git, a GitHub account that uh, will be used to store your remote repository and the Air for Data Science or collective repository. We we'll have basically three repository, yours on your computers, yours on your GitHub accounts, and the collective one we are sharing. Uh, that's it. So in your setup, what you need to do is to have like a repository with Git initialized, a remote repository in your GitHub account, I will tell you like uh, link it to your local repository and a link with the Air for Data Science Book Club Health GitHub repository. So basically your setup at the end should look like, uh, uh, see, mm, should look at, 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 like this. So now that Air for Data Science Book Club, your is space, mine is, the finest uh, book club and your computers. And when you make a change uh, in your, and you commit them, you pull them, it will change yours and ask for a pull request on the source, which John will validate it after. Okay. So, um, do, 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 what is it? Um, no. Oh, yeah, because I opened that. So, where is it? I lost it. I guess I have to build it. I'm opening the browsers. <clears throat> okay, so you see it's open in the browser, but it's still in my computer. I think it's important to. Okay, uh, that's it. So how can you set up if you haven't done it? You need to install Git, which is the installation is specific to your operating system. Introduce yourself to Git. Uh, that's basically like if I go here and I say, uh, let me think, uh, Git configure, I think it's V for verbose. No, that sounds Git help. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, which name is it? So you have a lot of help and like, I don't know, like I know probably 5% of it, maybe less. So I don't remember the command. So let's go like in the Bible of it is, uh, let it's uh, happy git with her. Like I have it's, put the link. It's config. I have put the link and it's config. What, sorry? Git config, git config. Then you give it your global username and also password. Yeah, I've already done it. So let I think let oh, let's check git configure. You said let let's do it. Git uh, one flag, two flag. I think just one two flag config. No, no, no. I think oh, git config. No, git config. Then dash dash. You give it your global username. Not, no, 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 go back. Like that? No, no, no. Git config, then dash, dash. Oh. Config? No, then. space, the config, you give a space. And dash, and global? No. After git, you give space, then config. Space, yeah. yes, config. Yes. Space dash 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 Maybe. again. Then your user your username, which okay. will be your username you use. Nope. Let's check. Let's check the. Um, I, I I never I never remember the. Me, yeah, I'm name. used to use this. I think use this makes the process to be simple. Yes, that I definitely recommend it. So. I think this is it, git config global, yes. Here, fast. And uh, let's say, uh, I think it's V for verbose. 
No. Then your username. Yes, this is to configure it, but I just, I have already configured, so I just need to check it. Is the uh, last one. Global list, this is this one. Yep. Yes, yes. So see, I failed all the time. So a uh, quick Google link help you to. So see, my username is set, my user email is set. The credential uh, is also set, like it's it's saved it on the cache. And um, my editor by default is Emac, which uh, can be different, but I prefer Emac. Then Control C, oh, it's probably Q here. That's good. So this should be uh, set, uh, and everything is explained way better than I could do in intrude your in happy uh, Git with R in introduce yourself to Git. So let's go back to that. Uh, having a GitHub account, so you need one. Uh, if you are a student, you can have a free pro account. If your institution, uh, um, if you uh, subscribe with the GitHub uh, of your institution, a link uh, with your email address from your like university, then you need to link GitHub and Air Studio. It's optional, but it makes stuff way more easy. Like everything also is explained on API Git with up. And then you can follow Air for Data Science workflow. I will just show it like uh, this is it, like how to present. And like you have every step. I think the video uh, explain uh, a bit how to set up GitHub locally. And then you must use this, which I have used uh, for like uh, this uh, prepare this branch, which is a package of Air that uh, automates like the. Um, the git command, like instead of like doing git, um, let's say, uh, like if I go back to my um, uh, my git config, um, get. Okay. See if I if I print it. Uh, if I check, like I have op opened a new branch, which is called First Week, and it has been created by using this pair in it. But I could have done another way of doing it. Basically, Git is just plain text somewhere. It just writes everything in some plain text, but with a particular format and style. So you shouldn't, like, even if you can write it with Emac or an editor, text editors, uh, you have to respect, like, it's very, like, um, strict on. Um, on the way the text is formatted. Uh, okay, so you see, like it was created by. I basically like started to follow like um, the um, the workflow of Air for Data Science. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back into to, 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 uh, that. Uh, my workflow is a bit. It's a bit different because what I usually do is like I go to my. Uh, I go to this, uh, this, and I fork it. So I click on that, it's already forked. It, so uh, you will ask me like if I can to want to re refork it and where I'm part of an organization. Uh, so this is my laboratory. So you want me to fork it, but I already fork on my personal account. And then uh, what I'm doing is like, as I will open, let's open a new windows. It's a bit slow, sorry. This is an old computer. Be nice with it. It's, it's basically like I'm open a new project. Good. Version control. I, I, subversion is an old uh, other way of doing a version control. And then you can pass the, you said where you want it to be. Then you can pass it in the repository URL. This repository. It's here. You have the choice between HTTPS as a protocol or SSH. Uh, I think currently GitHub enforces you to use the SSH protocol. You passed it. Uh, you passed it here. I will just change the repository to another places so it's it doesn't. Uh, let's say let's go was it up. And I create projects. And it will basically initialize you uh, with everything. 
But uh, the default of this workflow is like you do not have a connection between uh, the your remote your uh, remote directory and the Air for Data Science remote directory. So you have to set it up uh, later. This is what I have written here. Uh, you need to configure the upstream. So you need to configure the link between um, uh, the Air for Data Science repository and the, um, the um, your repository. So you can I can display that to you. Like if I go to Git here on this this new book club that I've created, Control H. Can I have the Git, please? Can you show me like the? Uh, okay, we go to the terminal. Yes, can I want to go to the terminal, please? Here. Uh, and I will get. Uh, so it's in Git and it's configured. See, unlike I can can I change that so you see it well? Did you see it well? Is it good? Yeah. See, it doesn't have any upstream, so the, it cannot uh, submit a pull request to the collective um, repository. So this is something that needs to be done. Like if you follow this link, you know how to do. Okay. Was it, what, is it good? Wasn't it too much? Should I go back into something? Uh, let me show, because I don't see you. No one is speaking, so I'm afraid, but I guess. It's okay. Okay, okay. So if you are lost in something, if I'm unclear, feel like interrupt me. Also, sometimes it's difficult, life is hard. Uh, you cannot attend to one session for whatever reason. My advice here, I, I stole it from like someone smarter than I, uh, it's following the flow. So the source is like, um, it's from Richard McElroyd, which is, is a professor of anthropology uh, in, I, I don't remember where, somewhere in Germany, I think München, but can be wrong. And he gave a lecture on YouTube, these lectures are great. And one of his advice following his lecture is following the flow. Like sometimes <laughs> you don't understand something, but the goal is not to ever understand everything. The goal is maybe if you understand 30%, it's always better than understanding zero percent. And learning online is hard. Like we all know that. So just follow the flow. Just like uh, uh, try to attempt every session and you will still learn way more than if you try. Like some people also are trapped in the mindset that want to understand everything. And if they don't understand something, like the, the stop. No, it's fine to not understand something. Go a bit like, I'm sure like the book of Paula Moraga is well designed. I'm sure if we don't understand like some particular concept with all the example we'll see later, we'll maybe try have a better understanding. So just stay, for, stay with us, follow the flow and we'll manage it, okay? I think it's very good advice for every kind of online learning. Just go to the end and you will still learn way more than if at one time you said, oh, I don't understand. It's fine. Not understanding it, it's totally fine. It's complicated stuff, no? Okay. No, uh, is it good on all? So what, what, what we can do now, uh, so I can show you like uh, the end of this process. So this, I can close it. This, uh, so I have currently two, uh, uh, projects. I, I highly encourage you to uh, work with project if you are still working. Like doing project is great and is it will help cleaning your your working space. So this I can close it. Uh, so I can go here. So I can. So this is I will unstage that because I don't want to. Uh, I will do the revert letters. So I will stage that. So Git know that I want to push it. And see, this is the image that I had. And then I will, so I have, I have, I have worked. You see like, this is like the counterpart of what we are seeing in the HTML document. And I will commit to it in first chapters. Oh, I can add a message. Uh, so first, uh, 
quick. I remove this uh, first week uh, chapters. Um, and so this is live commits, let's say. You should be more clear than I, but I'm bad at doing commit good message. So I committed. So now my gits know uh, that it has been done. This is, this is good, so I can close that. So now I just need to push it uh, up to uh, the uh, branch. So I will go to the, so it's, it has been committed. If I go like to my history, if I go to, uh, let's see, it's here maybe. No, sorry, it was the other history. You can see that I have uh, changed something on a new uh, branches, and it's 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 here. But it's only on my repository, so I want to have it uh, on everything. So what I will done if I was alone, I will uh, I will I will do bad practice, but bear with me. My God, the, 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 it is so slow. Let's go back to it. So if I'm going to git status here, we can see like uh, I haven't done anything. Like it, it's, it's the change has been committed, just have like deleted, but it's not pushed though. I need to push it. It's probably gonna work. And I have to set up stream. Sure, it did give me a nice message. And it's probably will be working, but I think, let's see if it works. I think this is, okay. And it's done. So now if I go back, it also tell me like, uh, it create a pull request uh, on my remote. Let's see, let's go for it. Come on, here. See, I, it automatically create a pull request. Uh, this is like the Air Force data science communities with it. <laughs> so John will see it. And when you update it, you will have my, uh, my notice here. Like you can just also compare uh, uh, and pull request. Or you have to click it to validate it. So first week here, um, doing on live. On so maybe. Uh, yeah, I've held a bunch of stuff. And the, I, I created it. So John will see it and he can ask me to do change because like maybe I have, I have so you have also like automating a test that's a, that will be done. And when the test will be done, uh, it will allow the, it will allow it, or you will ask me to do change. Like this is my commit. You can check. You can check what I have done, and this give us like a track of what everyone is contributing. So it's good for reproducibility. Okay, and then John can ask me change because maybe I have messed up and stuff like that. And then I will do it, and that's it. But if you, is it good? Okay, let's go back to that. I could have also used use this, which I highly recommend it. Uh, so, da, 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 da. Oh, I should have used use this pair push, see? Instead of going to the command line. But I don't, I, I'm not always all the time working on R Studio, so sometimes or on R. So sometimes I, I just prefer the command lines, even if I have to Google stuff. <laughs> And after, when John will accept my uh, pull request, I can use use pair finish. Okay. And the last time is important because like you always want to be uh, to have the last version on your uh, like let's say like I've done uh, all from Mephi I've worked in, and you have pushed something to the online communities, and I want it. To have it changed on my global, on my uh, local uh, repository. So this is why you have to um, to pull everything 
uh, letters to have every change. Okay. If 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 something break or fail, it's fine. Like no worries. It it break all the time. Uh, we can make a bunch of errors, and that's it. So no no worries of it. Okay. So I think it's good. Let's go back to that. So we have basically like we have. Uh, no, we, we can finally speak about the book, sorry. But it was long, maybe too long. Uh, but I wanted like to everyone know, like, this is simple. Even if I fail, it will something will like, John will help me, you will help me, I will help you, and we'll manage to, to share something. OK, can I just, just stop this up here, please? Maybe, oops, OK. OK, so that brings us to the first uh, chapters of geospatial health. I have just highlighted these huge chapters, like just paragraph. I think uh, this one is important. I will read it. Uh, in general, descriptive methods are the basis of routine reporting of surveillance data, of health surveillance data. This brings us to my first point on why. A lot of times, we are just doing descriptive methods. We are just like doing map, which is great, on observation pattern. So we are just describing a pattern we are looking at. Uh, but as the book said, more specialized hypotheses are exploited using inference uh, method. This is what we do a lot in this book, and this is why I picked this book. Uh, because like we can go like uh, we can do more uh, doing like statistics on spatial analysis than just looking at the map. Uh, then uh, she used like Polar used like uh, an historical example, the Jon Snow, uh, not the one like uh, on the top of the world, but the, the pastor uh, uh, in England uh, who was studying cholera. Uh, if you are interested in this historical example, uh, there is an air package uh, that have the data, so you can play with it, and it have a lot of um, a lot of uh, other historical example. Uh, that so it's it's fine to play with this if you are interesting. A part of it is this is mapping. Then I have just kept into uh, account the idea of so in la integrated uh, integrated nested Laplace approximation is a kind of Bayesian hierarchical model. Uh, as I said, what it's interesting it's because uh, it's help explain the variability of the response. A variable, let's say, like the disease we are trying to um, map or analyze, and all like the let's say, like the pollution we are also trying to get, uh, taking into account the variability into covariates, like the how we try to explain this disease or this pollution, and also like some effects. Uh, the word accommodate is used, but because like the inner methods are, are using the spatial. Or spatial temporal autocorrelation to uh, make uh, computational stuff easier. This is why we are using it. Also, like I had one point, which also is bring by the authors, is that you should be cautious. That's why I put like support matters. Support in geography is like the data uh, is supported by some kind of geometry. Let's say like you have data of uh, numbers of people uh, who have some disease and you have this uh, information at the an, administ uh, an administrative level let's say uh, township you cannot the move you cannot it's very hard to downscale this information you can aggregate it like let's say like at the bigger level let's say the national level but you, it's very difficult to look like for example a neighborhood Small, uh, small piece, uh, lowest uh, degree of information. If you want to learn more about support, I have put a link for the very good book that introduces it. Like, and uh, so the the point of it is you should be cautious uh, of at which level the information was recorded, and if you are working with an aggregate. The aggregated data sets, like let's say, like the you can have more, uh, um, uh, like more fine level of information. Let, let's say, like you are mapping pollution, 
uh, and you have like sensors on the ground that give you the pollution level. But uh, when you collect data, like your coworker just bring you like information at uh, let's say uh, a pixel data that's uh, cover more than one um, sensors. Then you can ask, okay, I'm maybe interested uh, into the sensors data because with this, I can do geostatistics. I can do uh, analysis a bit uh, a bit uh, more sensitive than the aggregate version of the pixel. Uh, that have been provided. This is also an option. So that's why I say like, it's interesting to know how the data was processed and what was the support of the data. Was it like one point? Was it like a municipalities? Because like it matters on how you will like after do some analysis. This is what she said, but she doesn't use the word support. I guess this is more a common world in geography world. But it matters. You cannot, like, for example, uh, break it. Finally, uh, the goal of geospatialists is just not collecting data, but also communicating for pre uh, and finding good way of communicating. I mean, we all have gone through COVID for these few years, so we probably have seen a bunch of dashboards, somewhere good, somewhere maybe bad. And this is what we will see after. Okay. Is it good? And this is this is I think like okay. So at the end, I've put resources. <laughs> Sorry. So happy Git with R, like from Jenny Bryan. This is like the Bible of uh, Git with R. And I highly encourage you. I mean, the, she will say what I have said this in a better way. But if you are not like don't want to read the huge book, it's fine too. So this is also like the link with the boom club. And also if you want to learn more about Git, uh, this, uh, this is a video, but also a blog. Let's go with it. That's have like, uh, let's introduce uh, uh, version to control with Git uh, from the MIT. But the same, they are smarter than I. Uh, they introduce Git at the command line uh the core the, the, they are funny uh but it's it's a bit harder and it's not necessarily necessary it's not like you don't need it but it's cool because like you will understand a bit more uh, how it works but i don't think it's 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 not monetary by any kind of means okay so i will stop sharing so do you have any question remark uh do i have lost you and next week, yes, we have to plan who is presenting next week. Okay, no one is speaking. Next week is easy, it's just Elmar Dong. Oh, new message. Someone wanted to present? Uh, if no one wants to start, I can start. There's no worry. Uh, let me check. Uh, but I will not do everything. <laughs> uh, so we will do an uh, introduction to our markdown. Uh, I think like it's it, it can be just uh, and also plotly. So I think uh, this can be one week. What do you think? I think, yes, this, this should be one week, no? Uh, what's your point of view? Okay, I do it next week. Then like someone volunteer to be like the week after. Okay, <laughs> the one speaking, I'm afraid. Uh, okay. We can see that next week, but I want other people like to present and see, I can definitely uh, do better at presenting. So I will do it and you can give me feedback. But uh, yes, uh, I'm doing next week. So I hoping like other people will shine other week. Yes, obviously we need to get more people to the group. I will advertise it, but uh, it's nothing you can do. Uh, John said like, Usually, uh, you you just have like four to six people. So we are liking one to three people 
but just a few weeks, so you know, it will take time. So if it's good, uh, I will put myself on next week and then we can see what happened next week. Okay? Well, it was nice to see you. I, I hope next time I can earn a bit more from you. Uh, and that's it. Hopefully see you next week. Bye.